I want to thank everybody uh, to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Commodity Markets, Digital Assets, and Rural Development. It has the rather clunky abbreviation of COMDAR. Uh, staff were instructed to find something better, but I guess that's the best that we could do, uh, so be it. We do have a lot of uh, work to dig into this year, and I'm excited to get started. Of course, today's hearing is on digital assets, but it's hardly the only thing that we're collectively going to be working on together. I mean, clearly rural development is going to be really important, particularly in light of that title of the Farm Bill. Uh, we also have the Commodities Future uh, Trading Corporation, or Commission rather, which is going to be important, particularly given the fact that we have had uh, both the uh, chairman and the ranking member commit to doing uh, reauthorization of the CFTC this year. Uh, and I look forward to working with uh, Chair Caraveo and others on the committee uh, on that work. But today, we are tasked with examining uh, digital asset markets and I think most importantly, understanding what are the gaps in this regulatory framework and how are those gaps harming innovators and consumers alike. And, and as I mentioned, we have an august panel to help walk us through that. I think uh, it would be an unfortunate deficiency if we didn't take a moment to call out the nearly unprecedented level of cooperation and collaboration that we have had with the House uh, Financial Services Committee. This is a town where people very much like to fight over turf and where egos can sometimes get in the way of progress, but that group is convening at this exact same moment a complimentary hearing dealing with the same general topic. What are the gaps in the regulatory framework and how can we work together uh, to address them? And in fact, next month, the collaboration gets even closer insofar as we have a joint hearing to examine these issues together. And those are, are not typical in this town. And that cooperation is a testament uh, to the importance that both Chairman McHenry and Chairman Thompson, as well as uh, you know, the teams on both sides of the aisle have had to getting things done on digital assets this Congress. Uh, a lot of ink has been spilled on digital assets, uh, a lot of it breathlessly positive, a lot of it angrily negative. Uh, I think uh, reasonable people understand that uh, digital assets and the underlying blockchain chains can bring a tremendous amount of opportunity. There have, uh, they can also be filled with a fair amount of hype. And we know that in this marketplace, as in every marketplace, there are fraudsters and hucksters uh, that seek uh, to make money while unfortunately giving uh, the whole industry a bad name. And uh, there are uh, the hits and misses are well known to all of us. You have hits like Ethereum, Hedera, Filecoin, uh, and then you have outfits like Banana Coin, Kodak Coin, and Mooncoin. So those are the, uh, the highs and the lows. Uh, the difficult task we're starting today, and, and we're really not starting it. I know there have been lots of informal conversations over the course of months, and even some work done in the last Congress. Uh, but the work that we uh, begin anew today is to craft a legislative framework that will allow the next Ethereum or Filecoin to emerge, while at the same time protecting the public from the hype, the scams, and the frauds that we have seen all too much of uh, in the last few years. So our first witness today is Mr. Daniel Davis, who is a partner and the co-chair of Financial Markets and Regulation at the Catton uh, Muchen uh, Rosenman uh, firm. Previously, he was the general counsel at the CFTC. We also have uh, Ms. Pervy uh, Maniar, who is the Deputy General Counsel, uh, counsel at Falcon X Holdings. Our third witness is uh, Nilmeni Rubin, who is the Head of Global Policy at Hedera. Our fourth witness is Mr. Timothy uh, Mossad. Mr. Mossad currently serves as a research fellow at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard and is the director of the MRCBG Digital Assets Policy Projects. He was, as I suspect many of you know, also a former chairman of the CFTC. Our fifth and final witness today is Mr. Joseph A. Hall, who is a partner at Davis Polk and Wardwell. He's formerly managing executive for policy at the SEC. I want to thank uh, all of our witnesses for joining us today. Thank you, Chairman Johnson, Ranking Member Caraveo, members of the subcommittee for inviting me to testify. As today is Take Your Child's Work Day, my husband has brought two of our three daughters here today. I am Nilmini Rubin, Head of Global Policy for the Hedera Governing Council, a decentralized multi-stakeholder governing body that establishes policies for the open source Hedera network. Hedera is a fast and green distributed ledger or public blockchain. 
Essentially, Hedera provides a layer of trusted internet infrastructure for applications with real world impact. What we call the internet is a set of computers talking to each other through open protocols. These protocols have evolved over time to enable additional features and capabilities that benefit society. Initially, protocols enabled only read-only text, or Web 1. Then they enabled posting content and conducting commerce, or Web 2. And now they enable personal control of data, or Web 3. Public blockchains are Web 3 platforms for other applications and are operated by a network of independent computers or nodes. Now, these nodes do not fund their operations by showing advertisements or selling subscriptions. Instead, nodes are paid by users directly through fees, like water electricity. Node fees are typically tiny and frequent, with hundreds or thousands of transactions processed per second. It is not possible to use the traditional financial system to send fractions of a penny quickly, efficiently, and globally. To solve this problem, public blockchains use a digital asset or cryptocurrency to rapidly transfer value between users and node operators. The cryptocurrency serves as a fuel on which the network runs. For example, in March, the Hedera network processed over 1 billion transactions. Each transaction cost between a tenth and a hundredth of a penny and was paid in the Hedera network's cryptocurrency called HBAR. The key takeaway here is that public blockchains need digital assets to operate. The ability of blockchains to provide trusted and time-stamped records enables people to store, track, and monitor data in new and powerful ways. Three examples of products running on the Hedera network include the Dovu marketplace that allows farmers to generate additional income from actions like changing farming techniques and planting additional crops. Their actions are tokenized as carbon credits to fund carbon reducing projects. The second one is Atma IO built by Avery Dennison. It helps brands reduce waste across the supply chain for over 28 billion items. It has both economic and environmental benefits. And third, everywhere. It monitors vaccine cold chain storage across the supply chain and picks up on any irregularities before administering those vaccine to patients, keeping patients safe. US network and market infrastructure providers need a complete roadmap towards compliance. The current US regulatory environment provides no clear path to compliance for digital assets, leaving blockchains with two choices, either stop operating in the US or hope US policy will come through before the enforcement of misaligned regulations. To protect consumers, enable innovation, and promote competition, we recommend Congress pass legislation creating an activities-based framework to regulate digital assets based on the nature of the transaction. First, Congress should provide a definition of and delineation between digital commodity and digital security or state when a digital asset is neither. Second, Congress should empower the CFTC to regulate certain digital commodity activities such as operating a centralized spot marketplace. To extend U.S. leadership and competitiveness, Congress should establish digital asset policy that supports the use of public blockchains. The rest of the world is recognizing the, the potential blockchains. Other jurisdictions, such as Dubai, Europe, Singapore, and the United Kingdom, are creating digital asset regulatory certainty. The United States risks shutting out businesses that rely on digital assets to operate, risks shutting out the ability to regulate the industry, and most importantly, risks removing the American people's access to the efficiency, transparency, and data storage tools that the rest of the world will be using to their competitive advantage. Thank you for focusing on policy for the next wave of digital innovation. Very well said. Uh, so, uh, start my question with Mrs. Rubin. I'd, uh, I'd like to further explore with you the practical uses of digital assets and blockchain technology. In your testimony, you talk about how several organizations are using the uh, uh, 
Hedera network to improve their businesses. Uh, can you elaborate on a project or two uh, uh, who utilize uh, your network to accomplish daily or commercial activities? Thank you, Chairman, for this question. Um, there, I included a few use cases in the, in the testimony. One was, was Dovu, which allows farmers to tokenize the work that they're doing. So let's say they have a regular crop and they plant additional flowers around the edge that has different uh, environmental benefits and carbon benefits. They can tokenize that and sell it as an offset. They can, um, if they decide to drill instead of tilling, they can tokenize that changed farming technique and make money on it. It's, um, it's really fascinating. Another one um, that, that I thought was fun was True FM, a uh, Tune FM. And it's kind of like Spotify, but on the blockchain. So it allows artists to get paid immediately. Like as soon as someone's listening to it, then that, that tiny amount of money goes to them. They don't have to like wait. They don't have to prove there are a certain number of listeners. It's, it's clearly on the blockchain. This number of people listen to your song and this is how much you get and per amount of time the, the song was played. Um, another um, that really moved me was with AVC Global and Medical Value Chain. And what it does is it allows, it uses Hedera to authenticate pharmaceuticals. So you can track and make sure that that pharmaceutical is legitimate. It turns out that car uh, counterfeit pharmaceuticals, um, it doesn't just cost companies money when they're used. It, it like endangers people's lives because these pharmaceuticals are, are not real. So um, there's, there's just amazing use cases that that we haven't, we haven't even begun to explore. Back in. Mr. Langworthy from New York, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member. Uh, Mrs., uh, uh, Mrs. Rubin, last week the European Parliament passed their crypto asset legislative framework known as MECA. Uh, I heard from several crypto companies that due to the lack of regulatory clarity, uh, that many firms are choosing to domicile their companies in jurisdictions that do have clarity. Uh, in addition, a recent study published uh, by the developer report reported that the U.S. is continuing to lose its lead in blockchain, going from 40 percent of the developers globally to 29 percent. Uh, Mrs. Rubin, are you seeing this innovation flight as well? As if, if, if you are seeing that, how can we reverse that? Um, thank you, um, Mr. Langworthy, for that question. Um, yes, the flight that you're discussing is real. And it's happening. People are, are fleeing to jurisdictions with regulatory clarity because they want to know that their businesses are operating within the law and that they can operate fully and that they can make investments that will stand. So they're, um, it's, it's kind of this shocking situation where the United States, which is usually at the forefront of every technology, is now standing back and allowing other jurisdictions to, to run ahead. And this is not just bad for the businesses themselves, but it's bad, bad for the American consumers because we won't have access to these, these transformative technologies. Um, you know, Hedera was created by US veterans, it, um, people who were teaching at the Air Force Academy. Like we launched Hedera here in the United States as a global platform. Um, we're, our firm desire is to make this um, a, be a platform from here. But it is, it is very scary and fearful to um, be working in a, an environment without regulatory clarity. So the number one thing that you could do is help provide that regulatory clarity. Thank you very much. And, uh...